introduce our next speaker here. So as of May 2017, Janice is working on company number It's a that others love and recommend. So two years ago, she started searching and very easily recognize thousand plus clean certification sustainable named can a chemical To clean the energy facilities. So let's give a warm welcome to Janice Lee. So you already know everything about me, so I'm done. <laughs> um, I had trouble figuring out what to say today because I actually did not want to be an engineer. So how many here are already engineering students? How many of you are applying to do something sometimes? And where's everyone else doing? <laughs> <laughs> really, working? Yes. Oh, students in something else? Oh, interesting. So when I started, so flashback, so this was about 15, 17 years ago when I had to apply. Environmentalism wasn't a thing yet. Sustainability wasn't very popular yet. Um, the term clean tech didn't exist yet. So it was a very different setting. But deep within my heart, I wanted to just to make the world a better place in some way from an environmental perspective. Didn't know what it was. There were no job labels for it yet. Uh, the sector didn't exist. Um, so, I just knew I wanted to solve some of these problems, didn't know what, didn't know how. I mean, we were 17, 18, what do we know? Um, so at that time, I wanted to study humanities, social science, uh, environmental studies, something in that world where I learn about inequality, social injustices, and trying to figure that landscape out. But my stepdad was a nuclear engineer. My brother is a mechanical engineer. You know, my aunt and uncle were accountants. So we're all from a very professional family and I'm Asian. I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> okay, so you take no, all right? So my mother had a tendency, had uh, she totally pushed, okay, towards engineering or law or doctors and I think some of you can relate. And because engineering at the time meant good money, stable career and credibility, okay, and it's true. But it wasn't what I was looking for. I looked at engineering brochures to see if it was for me, and it asked, do you like building things? No. <laughs> you know, when something was broken, did you care to take it apart and put it back together? No. I'm like, did you like solving complex problems? No. <laughs> right? I didn't, what the heck is a complex problem? <laughs> oh, so I just wanted to make the world a better place, but not knowing how to name it. Fast forward, I caved. I did chemical engineering at Waterloo. Um, okay. Yeah, I did love it, right? <laughs> I didn't love it. It was, um, and it was when I did want to change. I wanted to change after year one. I was like, maybe environmental or something. There was an environmental and business program that was newish at Waterloo. Um, but at the same time, a lot of my classmates failed first year. And they wanted to do engineering. I was like, oh, that's weird, right? That's a weird, weird dynamic. It's, I'm not, I'm not all in here, but I can do it. And then I looked at environment and business program and they only needed a 70 something average. I said, like, that's weird too, right? It's like, am I, is it, is, am I going down, right? Is there a thing like that? And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't understand this, right? No one taught me what to think about. Um, so I stayed, no good reason, I stayed. Um, I love school. I love school life. Um, and now when I look back, I was always surrounded by the smartest people. 
I was not necessarily all that disciplined, all that hardworking, um, but I was surrounded by people who were really hardworking, who were really disciplined, and they rubbed off on me and I got better. And I could see I was becoming a better version of myself year after year. I was more disciplined when you had to be. We had more classes than everyone else by far, right? And more coursework by far. We had to learn things that I'm like, do I really care how this fluid travels in a pipe when it bends this way, right? I was like, do I really care day in and day out? Is this what I want? And I was like, the answer, quick answer was no, right? I didn't want, I didn't know what chemical engineering meant. I wanted something environmental, <laughs> that's all. So what I did was I ended up taking a whole lot of environmental courses. I kept reading about it. I kept volunteering uh, within that realm. I just kept immersing myself in that sector. It was where I wanted to be. Um, so then, oh, fast forward. After I graduated, I, came, I became an environmental engineering consultant. So like, yes, you did it, right? It was an intersection between engineering and environmentalism. And I loved it. I loved it. Then I kind of hated it. Okay, I, and then it was, I learned a lot the first two years, and then after that, I was like, oh, this is not right for me. Um, I felt like, so environmental engineering consulting in my sector, it was when someone, let's say, um, let's say a gas station was selling the gas station, the land. Now, someone has to figure out how contaminated that soil or that groundwater is, and with what, right, and how, how bad is the damage. So they would hire companies like mine, or like that's the industry I was in. We would be hired, we'd figure out how, how contaminated it was and how to remediate or how to clean it up. I felt like I was just an industry's janitor, right? I was just cleaning up other people's messes. Now other people, like my colleagues loved it. So it just wasn't for me, right? Where, where I felt like change needed to happen in the industry. And so I applied for environmental jobs very strictly in environmental stewardship. I applied for not-for-profit not jobs. At this point, I had four or five years experience, but I applied for jobs that required one to two. I was like, oh, I'm a newbie. Let me, you know, let me enter. And I didn't even, I didn't get one interview. And then I remember calling and I said, why am I not even in, being interviewed? And they were like, you're overqualified. Can you sense my bitterness at that point? I'm like, what? I thought I had credibility. I thought I was a superstar, and now I can't even get a job, or right? any job. Um, so I did my MBA. <laughs> um, there, there was no real reason for that either. Okay, um, it was. I don't, you know, it was just to be surrounded by different people who thought differently, um, and I felt like I lacked business acumen when I wasn't an engineer. I had strong social skills, strong interpersonal skills, strong communication skills, but I didn't have strong business skills. I couldn't get someone to say yes to me, right? I was very technical. It was, this is how you solve a problem technically, yes or no, you don't debate. I didn't know how to debate. I didn't know how to think strategically to get my way, i.e. be conniving, manipulative, okay? <laughs> so I did my MBA. Um, so fast forward, after I graduated, I still didn't know what to do. I still didn't know what environmental issue. Um, but I then at that point knew this environmentalism thingy within me was not going away, right? I had to really just figure out how to use my skill sets and my passion and make it intersect. And so that's how I started the company's um, search clean. At the, it was, the business acumen plus the engineer mind just made me solve different problems and more importantly very different solutions the engineer mind helped me get from point a to point b the fastest how do i solve this problem every day women we are using chemicals or we're using beauty products on ourselves every day knowing that there are harmful chemicals we know it but we're like eh, it's okay and i was like how do i solve that problem so that's how i came up with the certification to make it easy. That's why I came up with the pure picks of the trip advisor, because we're not changing our eyeliner unless we know it works. So we created that pl platform. So again, it's really just problem solving. So, but why, why I decided to tell you about my journey the way I did? Because I really could have stood up here and said, this is what I did, this is how I got here. And I think for young people and old people, 
It's okay to be reminded. It's okay to not know what to do in life, period. You don't need to know today. You don't even need to know tomorrow. Most people change on average, I think 12 jobs in their lifetime. So that's only spending five years per job. Can you even name 12 job titles within a, a particular sector? How can you possibly know what you wanna do three jobs later when you can't name job, 12 job titles today? What's a business analyst? What's a strategy consultant? Risk analysis, it's all different for different sectors. So don't think that when adults ask you what you want to do in life, it's because they're trying to get ideas. <laughs> okay? You don't need to know. So my life lesson is actually just shoot high. Okay? If you're not sure, shoot high. Be surrounded by people who are smarter than you, more patient than you, more disciplined than you, more ambitious than you. They'll rub off on you and you'll be better. Um, and it's also when I think about how when I applied for jobs in the environmental sector, it wasn't because I was an engineer I was overqualified. Why on earth did I apply for jobs that only required two years of experience when I already had five? So that's something in women we have to work towards, is that confidence bit. We can do it, and we'll kick ass at it. If we haven't done it before, we'll still kick ass at it. Um, so shoot high and apply for those jobs. I should have applied for jobs that required five years of experience that paid more. I applied for jobs that paid less than half of what, what I was making. So it was really this, this is all to say my mother was right, okay? <laughs> Engineering did have good money, stable career, and credibility. But I didn't know what that really meant. What the hell is a stable career? You know, when we were young, what, what is it now, really? Um, but some things are, what was really important when I look back on my career, it was money. When I was 17, I said, I don't care about money. I'll make ends meet, I'll figure it out. What's, what's, 60, what's 30,000 to 70,000 to 120,000 a year in salary in terms of lifestyle? We don't know, we had an allowance. Um, so, but what I'm trying, because I did engineering consultant and I saved my money, I was able to pay for my MBA with cash. I didn't, it, it didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a financial decision. I could do it just because. I could finance my own company because I had money in the bank. And that's all because I did engineering. If I had picked environmental and business, I wouldn't have been paid as much as I did. I still wouldn't have known what to do. So it's, if you don't know what you wanna do, you just get a job. Get a job, don't love it, change. Get another job, but shoot high. Don't, don't sh go for jobs you haven't, you know, you, you feel like you're 90% sure of. Apply for a job you're 10% sure of, right? You'll, you'll get it, you'll get it. If you don't apply, you will not get it, period. <laughs> you can't debate that. Um, so I think what I've learned Despite, so I didn't want to do engineering when I was in my, in my teens. I was totally bitter and unhappy when I had my first gig. But right now, I'm incredibly happy and incredibly grateful for the journey that I have had. And I wouldn't know this, and that came with maturity. So when you're battling, what do you want to do? What do you not want to do? Shoot high. That's all. Thank you.